grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel just read, taken from St. Mark, chapter 9. So is the tongue good or bad? Does it purify or destroy? Why is the connection between our mind, our heart, and our mouth so unpredictable? Why doesn't it seem to work like it should? Why can't I keep my mouth shut when I am supposed to? It's not easy, is it? We have a weird text today, yet again. Jesus has come down from the Mount of Transfiguration here in Mark chapter 9. The people continue to crowd around him, to clamor after him, to follow him wherever he goes. They want, it seems, what only he can give. Instead of getting Jesus, they get the backup team. They get the disciples. And a man apparently comes to Jesus, gets the disciples, with a problem not that different from what we saw last week. A son who is mute, who's been possessed by a demon, and who convulses like he's having an epileptic seizure, and has done so from childhood, often ending in fire or water, threatening the young child's life. The man came to the disciples and begged them to help him. The disciples had been sent out. They had been with Jesus for a while. They knew the word. They had been commissioned. He had given them authority to preach and to teach and to cast out demons even. Some of them had seen the transfiguration. They recognized that he was the Son of God. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Peter declared. And yet, for all of that, their words meant nothing. They were a failure. It seems that you can know all the right things, you can even do all the right things, and still fail. What a bummer. <laughs> and yet, there it is again and again in our lives. We act as though succeeding and failing are simply and only up to you. If you think that success or failure is simply up to you, then you have missed the point. And at the center of this with our text is the place of common. <laughs> words. Again and again and again in the scripture we hear both the beauty and joy, the healing that can come from words, and we hear of its destructive power. James calls it, and I think rightly so, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it he says we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse People who are made in the likeness of God, from the same mouth came blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not be so. So far, says James. But we still do it again and again and again. We come up with ways of blaming others for our own failures, of finding that juicy tidbit of gossip that, well, it's got to be shared, obviously. What good is gossip if you don't share it? Again and again and again, we use words, tongue, to hurt and to destroy. And not simply on the internet. This happens in real life all the time. And, of course, we're not talking simply about <coughs> strangers, are we? It is easiest, it is simplest, it is most effective to hurt the ones you love. 
because you know their heart and mind. You know how to get those words to stick in just the wrong place. And so the restless evil of the tongue continues. And much like those disciples in Jesus' day, the tongue makes it so that even if we say the right words, it doesn't seem like it has the effect that we want. Have you ever had that happen where you planned, you rehearsed out everything that you were going to say that was going to make everything just right, just perfect? And you say it and, well, it didn't quite work, did it? Sometimes it is so. We get a little glimpse of what's going on at the end of our text. After all of this had happened, after the disciples had been shamed, after Jesus had healed the boy, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast him out? What happened? Jesus answered, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. Prayer? Where did that come into this? Prayer is a conversation God starts in his word. Prayer is the voice of faith that cries out to the one who gave faith in the first place. In other words, God speaks to you by his word, and you speak to him by his word in prayer. That's the conversation. That's the back and forth that happens day after day in the life of the Christian. And so often, as we are hustling and bustling and tussling and fighting ourselves and others and trying to make everything make sense in this life, so often we forget to actually stop, pray, and listen. Because the two go together. There is no praying without prayer. They go together. Evil can be driven out first by receiving the word that God gives, communing with him. Let me say that one more time. Evil can be driven out by communing with God and receiving his word and speaking to him. As long as we seek to solve our problems, fix our problems, Ills, make things right with one another and with God by our own strength or power, as long as that's kind of our, our goal, our way of making it happen, we, like the disciples, will fail. But Jesus, who is the Word made flesh, who is God's communion with us, Jesus is the one who comes to us even now, and who gives us the words to pray, <coughs> our Father who art in heaven. And Jesus himself not only prays for us, like we have him do in the garden, he prays with us. We say, our Father, after all, not my Father. And he prays in us and through us. Because it is the name of Jesus that was put on you, in holy baptism, and it is that same Jesus who cries out for the Father day after day for you and for the whole world. We receive his gifts in order to give and to share with one another. If the receiving of the gifts is not happening, then our ability to use that tongue for good and not evil, well, it's going to mess up. And so they kind of work together over and over and over again. Remember again those words from Isaiah, the Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. So receive what God in his word gives to you this day. A word of hope. A word that says he has done all things well. Receive the word that can only come from him. The word of forgiveness.
covenant, the word of life, the word of salvation. Receive that word from him so that you too may speak a word to those around you. Speak a word to those who are weary and give them comfort, just as God himself has comforted you. In Jesus' name. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. We confess.